air. Uh, we are in with a, well, like you said, the Losers Bracket Finals. We have Samsung Galaxy versus uh, Doo Doo Demons. Yes, the Doo Doo Demons. Name. That's that's a very <laughs> satisfying name to say. I mean, don't get me wrong, the content might be peculiar, but at the same time, heck, if kids uh, kids shows can crack a, a poop joke once in a while, why can't an astronauts team? Am I right? So no. these two teams, uh, what do you know about them? All right. Well, I don't. I actually, I, who is in these teams? But I no. But I, I could assume where the name comes from for Doo Doo Demons because it is Nikki's team, but. We've got plenty of great players in this team, and uh, I think we're going to be having a good match today. So, we are going to get into this draft. We are already on the draft screen right now. Samsung Galaxy vs. Studio Demons on Iggy Lawn, and I will get into the draft unless you want to, uh, Slow Wolf. Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. So, Samsung All Galaxy right. end, end up uh, first banning Deadlift. Counter ban end up being Genji. Um... As far as bans go, honestly, let's just go through all of them all at once, I guess. Deadlift and Ix end up getting banned by Samsung Galaxy. Two very interesting knots to have bans for them. They end up picking up Penny, uh, the Lux 5000, and Scree seems to be a very popular pick these days. Doo Doo Demons, not a fan of Genji, I can obviously see why. Very strong knot, and they get rid of Coco as well. They pick up a Vinny, a Leon, and a Scoop. Again, I'm... Interested to see what happens here with their teams. Uber, what's your take on them? Well, we've seen that Scoop and Scree have proven their worth. Scoop could so like soak up a lot of that, uh, a lot of that damage from enemy uh, knots, a lot of the burst, and just kind of take it all himself. And sometimes he even lives through it. Most of the time, he lives through it actually. And then when you've got two really high damage knots with your Scoop, like Leon and Vinny. You could do some serious pain with that, and they'll be able to retaliate. Uh, initiation's quite nice, but Samsung Galaxy also has a lot of damage, having really nice brawling potential from Lux, and Scree and Penny are able to pull out some crazy shenanigans as well. Pulse is going to give the amp damage and can go through walls. It's going to be quite effective. And also, uh, Scree with the Sawblade is going to be able to get slow on auto attack Sawblade, and he's going to be able to maybe even get like height on Totem if he wants to have some shenanigans like the last match and going to be able to do a lot of pain and damage with that. I'm not sure who I think is in favor in this match, We see, but we've seen Scree. We've seen Scree do some work here, and Penny is going to be really nice at pushing, and Lux is fantastic on Angulon, so I feel like maybe the team might be slight, slightly in favor of Samsung Galaxy, though with the Vinny pickup and with the uh, nice initiation from Scoop and Leon, uh, it could really go either way. I agree, and I'm curious to see whether or not the Leon into Vinny slash Scoop combo works a second time in today's stream, but we'll have to go into the game to see, so Uber, if you're ready, uh, I think that we should get this party started as soon as possible. Absolutely, I'm at the 21 second mark, we are doing this match alive, we're going to be behind by a couple of minutes, but it is effectively, effectively live, and I'm at the 21 second mark, counting down from three and going and go, are you ready? I am ready. Alright, three, two, one, to go. And just a reminder, we are here on Aegeo, it's a ganker's dream, which might favor both teams equally, honestly. Uh, you have Smeb playing your Penny, you've got Slevins playing your Scree, and you've got Ninevolt playing your Jimmy in this case. On the blue team, you got Nikki playing your Leon, you've got Dave W playing your Vinny and Spike, and you've got Ubi playing the Scoop. Uh, and let's be honest, we've seen Ubi before in competitive scenarios play Scoop. Uh, we'll see whether or not he ends up going for a similar build as uh, the last scoop we saw today, Snow Shovel already being picked up. We have Silence being picked up by Penny first thing out of the gate. Slow on the left, clicking the danger pins for the Jimmy. Um, you have Scoop picking up Snow Shovel, like I mentioned before. Silence on Vinny's dash. And then Tongue Stretcher on Nikki's uh, Leon here, which is not always the first thing you see. Usually it's damage or silence. What do you make of that pickup? I feel like since they've got the silence on dive, he's feeling he can get silence after range, and it'll just make that pull, that tongue, way harder to dodge. It's going to be kind of a pain in the ass for the red team here because they could just get they could just get pulled from like across mid with the range that that thing's going to have. Nine bolt going to charge away, and you'll be going to eat a pulse for about 200 damage. And well, we just got a little poking and skirmishes so far. No real initiations except for on nine bolt, who's going to take a ton Ooh. of damage and go down to the sword swiffing after eating the dive pull and hammer, I imagine. And, oh, we got Scree taking a bunch of damage as well. Slevins is going to go down to Nikki's auto attack after eating all that burst as well as the bindings. And Lux is going to go down. Now, we, Lux and Scree are going to go down, excuse me. And now that's already two kills for the blue team here with Lux being back and alive once again already, though. 
and Slevin's gonna be dropping right now and landing. And we got the blue team with a nice solar advantage, experience advantage, and area control advantage now. But all of the red team is going to respawn quite quickly. So it's not that big of an effect. Oh. But Ninevolt's gonna take a lot of damage. Is he gonna get caught out again? No, he's gonna be able to charge up away this time and stay safe to live another day. But still very close, almost dying twice in a row. That would have been quite the embarrassment. And now we're seeing the double silence get picked up by Leon here. Yeah, that tongue has been instrumental in both of the kills the blue team has had so far, and in the almost third kill that they've all, like just about just shy of uh, acquiring there. It's a frightening day when you're up against Nikki because he doesn't miss. I think that's probably like the main thing. On top of having good teamwork and an excellent mind for what's going on in the big picture as well as in the uh, details, Nikki just does not miss his right clicks. I've seen a lot of people play a lot of different knots. And uh, the only reason why Nikki ends up doing better than some is because of the fact that he's so accurate. So we'll see whether or not that ends up being the case here, and how uh, you know, and how often this Leon ends up being successful. If the Leon's even on the field, it's a really good gank comes out, an excellent push coming out of the Jimmy. Um, as much as I was talking up Nikki there, he's by no means un like he's not he, like he can bleed, and uh, yeah. especially as a Leon in this case, he's got some weaknesses. He's definitely got some weaknesses here. He can be quite the scary character to fight. I've only I've only played against him a few times, mind you, but I once had to go against him in a Scolder 1v1. That was fun. Uh, it wasn't. No, I mean, his most played this season is Scolder, and he's number yeah. one on the leaderboards, so... Uh, but either way, imagine. yeah, he's, he's <laughs> really, he's an accurate player. That's that's one thing that's very true about him. He does not miss at all, if even, like, he does not miss very often, if at all. And he can always land those right clicks and those middle mouse clicks uh, with consistency. He's always really good at landing the abilities he needs to land in team fights. He's not going Interesting. to... Interesting. Uh, Slevins, magic fun balls already. Um, how much fun do you think this is going to result for the red team? Uh, the result of magic fun balls on a streak equals a lot of fun, usually. And if he gets that slow, which he actually does have already, whoops. Uh, he's going to be able to do a ton of damage and just be really annoying with that forked lightning there. It's going to be a real pain in the butt for them, and they're also going to do half damage, and it's just it's just going to be a lot of extra damage from the Magic Sun Balls, as well as, uh, well, just being really annoying poke that's going to be able to apply a lot of slow, and if he gets the, uh, if he decides to pick up some damage on auto attack, it's just going to be really hard to deal with. Do you think that, the, well, okay, you know what? Let's flip the tables here for a minute. Damage or Ceremonial Mask? Oh jeez, I think you would still get damage, like, if unless you pick up, like, Starstorm Statue and you're really confident in landing your Sawblades, you probably still want damage. But Ceremonial Mask could be quite the... well, it would have be some fun shenanigans, but that's not really what you're going for in a competitive tournament like this. And, you know, the Gathers is designed to be a, you know, slightly more casual tournament that, like, everybody could join, and it's a great way to get into competitive. But there is still a $60 cash prize, and I don't think these people want to give it up, because it is the Losers Finals. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if they lose this set, they're out. The tournament, like, they are out of the tournament. They're not going to go into the Grand Finals or anything. And even if they make it to the Grand Finals or the Losers Finals, they're going to have to have a bracket reset as well. So it's going to be quite the challenge for both teams in order to win this tournament. But they still, they've still got hope and they still want to believe. And here's this team fight coming out now. Dave W going to take a lot of damage, almost go down with Ubi being quite low as well. Blue team getting poked to, oh, poked to death and taking a lot of damage. We got Gunpenny coming out already, as well as Silence. So that's going to be quite the quite the kit for Penny. They're having that range auto attack and the Silence and Pulse is going to be quite effective during the team fights. Nikki going to go for the poke and land it on Slevins, but nobody is there to help him get the kill at all. But Dave W is now on that bottom lane with Ubi maybe looking for a dive into Hammer or Hammer into Dive or Hammer Dive at the same time. So many decisions to make. But the main thing is that they need to land all their abilities all at once. Oh, yes. there's an invisible 9 volt. He's looking for an opportunity to get off a push, and he gets it off on Ubi. But at what cost? He ends up going down to Nikki and the left clicks. A good couple of stabs in the face going to be able to clinch it there. A good body oh, block. We're going to go ahead and secure a second kill for the Leon here, bringing him to 3 to 1, his team to 4 to 1. Um, Wow, that was incredibly good uh, Good work out of the blue team finding an opportunity despite the fact that they were the ones initiated upon by the Jimmy there. Yeah, Nikki, Nibby, that great body block there, and Nikki able to pick up the double kill. He's going to be well fed and be able to get some nice upgrades as well. So he's going to be able to get some serious work done now. He's got that range of double silence. He might pick up thumb damage now, or he might go for something like backstab blade. We'll see what he chooses. 
And he's gonna get double Clover of Honor, actually. He's gonna get the increased damage on the second hit, as well as the stage of Medigan, so he's gonna be able to stay alive a little easier and stay in lane. And he's gonna have extra damage on his uh, auto attack every other hit, so that's gonna be quite the effective little upgrade. But there's the dive coming in. Smep's gonna take a lot of damage out and get silenced. Levin's gonna take even more. Scoop is chasing him, but the totem is gonna block him off, and he's gonna be able to get away, as well as Smep with the nine bolt going in with the missiles. Nikki gonna drop down, try to get something done. He's gonna take a bit of damage, though. That top turret is really low on the red team. They're just gonna body it. They're just going for it, and it's gonna go down, but now Nikki might get punished. No, he's not gonna get hit by that pulse. That pulse is just too late, and he's gonna be able to get out alive with AW and Ubi rotating to the bottom lane. Looks like yes. What does the red team have to do to kind of um, continue what they had at the beginning of this, which was uh, like a lot of... They, they were keeping the blue team zoned out for a while, is what I'm trying to get at. They were able to keep them at a distance, make sure that they were behind their turrets, chip away a tiny little bit at this bottom blue turret, and suddenly that's very that's changed, and it's very much in blue team's favor now. But what do they need to do to kind of bring that feeling back? Because The red uh, team's going to need a, I feel... Oh, never mind, Ninevolt's going to get caught out, take a ton of damage there. There's a saw blade not really going to do too much, and we're going to be able to back off. But anyways... I think the red team is going to start need to, needing to build into damage quite soon. Gunpenny is going to have to get Starstorm Statue, Cookie Monster Badge, maybe some pulse damage, or definitely pulse damage, but you want to get it soon. Uh, Double Steel Drum is going to come out. He's only got one stage of it so far. And auto attack damage on Lux and maybe some missile damage. We'll see if we'll see triple missile, Good but it doesn't matter. Dash to everything else. That's going to end up being an easy kill. Uh, the red team are now going ahead and trying to chase up the oh, Vinny, the but charge. no dice. A very good push going on to the scoop. Not enough. On the back side, Nikki gonna be able to pick up a kill on Penny, who was after the Vinny as much as possible, but didn't end up securing the kill. So that's gonna be a two for nothing pickoff here for the blue team. A very unfortunate series of events here for um, our red team right now. It's I'm finding it actually remarkable that we're watching a losers bracket here, considering yeah. the people that are playing. Absolutely, yeah. You've got Nikki's team actually in the losers finals. I'm not sure who put them there, but either way. Uh... Yeah, but whoever loses this is going to be out of the tournament. So they are trying their hardest, and that might be why we're seeing such a good effort. As Nightbolt is going to get taken out by Nikki's auto attack after eating that dive for solid 500 damage there. Lots of damage, more than 500. He's got double damage upgrades. Whoops, I need to pay more attention. Silly me. But he's got bag of gold, bag full of goldfish, and he's got double crow piles. He's going to be doing about 600, 700 damage with that dive now. It's going to be quite dangerous. Ubi going to drop up from the south there. You're going to get that cheeky 200 damage and the hammer onto the tower, and just going to teleport out using that robotic sword to get the teleport. And you know, we got Dave W on the top lane, Blue Nicky on the bottom. And, well, Slevins and Smeb just doing their own thing. Sawblade's gonna come out. It's gonna be, like, see, that's the thing. The red, air, the red team is doing great at zoning because of the Sawblade and the Totem and stuff like that. And, well, we got the missiles coming out from Ninevolt, but the dive is going to miss Ninevolt. We got Smeb not too curvy. He's gonna go in on Ubi, but... Do you see Ubi's it. items, though? Ubi's items? <laughs> Dude, he's got, like, pure utility. Outside of going to the Lance and Snow Shovel, it's just the utility monster. Dave W taking a bunch of damage, Penny now taking a lot of damage on the backside as well, needs to back off and be safe. Um, but just pills, regen, and barrier mag, first things first. He is the, he's the beefiest, meatiest ice cream you have ever seen. He is bacon flavored ice cream right now, dude. You want to know the difference just... between real ice cream and, you know, lousy ice cream? Real ice no. cream is the kind of ice cream that it would take you all game to chew and it still wouldn't die. That's pretty much what Ubi's doing right now. And it's you you all you ice cream, it makes me wonder how good that ice cream is for you. Probably very As bad. Nikki Nikki's also gonna go down to the Smep auto attack with Ubi taking a lot of damage, but the nice hammer is gonna give him some health and help him get away. With Dave W get chased by Scree, but Slevins can't really do too much. Nine bolt Slevins and Smeb are all gonna be jumping around. Smeb having to clear, but he's gonna need some health soon. Dave W just going to dive away from that saw blade because why not? And well, a little bit of poke from the red team here and here and there on these turrets with the blue team's droids getting destroyed as well. But now we got Nikki back into the fray. He's got backstab blade and double regen. Gonna help keep him alive and he's got a lot of auto attack damage. No damage on tongue, no damage on pull yet, but it seems like he's gonna get that at some point. Unless he decides to go full utility, may as well get Spectacles Magnet. You know, it's three second, three second blind. Why not, right? But... Um... I'm <laughs> as much as it is a very, like, trolly kind of pick, I think that Nikki's oh. got a little bit more sense than that. We'll eventually go for damage, but... Um, it might not even come to that point as they almost pick off another kill on the Penny here. Uh, really, the blue team is starting to taper off in terms of damage, but it's not by enough to really uh, cause them to miss out on any kills. What's interesting right now is to look at the uh, red team to see how they're coping with this disadvantaged position. They only have two kills compared to the seven that the blue team's got. Um, 
And to compensate for that, what are they getting? Well, they've got Spider-Man Collector's Badge, they've got the Zerium Mechanic, they've got some uh, Star Storm Statue, and that's just on the Penny alone. Slevin's, by the way, taking a ton of damage. The tongue into a hammer is just a little bit too much for him to handle. And Nikki's uh, follow-up Stabby Stabs are going to be enough to pick up the kill. Um, like, honestly, this is a, a massive farm fest in terms of what the uh, you know Doodoo Demons are capable of putting out right now. Uh, they, they've got all this money just kind of pushing them forward and constantly keeping them afloat where the red team just don't they are they don't have really any farm at all the like the lux is being forced into piggy banking to get flip farm add-on um they're going for cheap effective damage upgrades like star storm statue but none of the really big things that they need so it's looking bad but i don't think it's impossible uh pulse is going to come out it's going to nearly kill the Vinny, but not quite enough to get the kill uh and the uh, lux is just going to go ahead and back on off where, what does the red team have to do to really clinch, like, a foothold in this match? Well, they're buying more damage, which was something I suggested they should do before, which is going to really help them actually deal with Scoop, because Scoop is great at kind of just absorbing that damage, especially with the maximum tank build, beef ice cream, that he's decided to become. But he doesn't have any damage of his own. He's really just there as a distraction most of the time, and to help get that snare hammer to help Nikki get the initiation, which he's going to get on nine. We'll do a little bit of cheeky damage there. Doing about 200 damage per swing every other auto attack with that clover and backstab, which is quite effective if gimmicky damage. He does, but chainsaw add-on has never really been that popular of an upgrade for Leon, until, except for like very early on in the game. But you know. For a while now, it's not been the most popular upgrade, but having that gimmicky damage, it does a lot of damage. And it's very cost efficient. Dave W almost going down though, and he's actually got the Codfather, which means he's going to do extra damage when a wealthy enemy is uh, nearby. So he's going to be able to do a little bit extra damage there with that. It's also going to help spot uh, Invis uh, enemies with the Eggerlon Stealth Orb. But Nikki taking a lot of damage on the missiles here. Nine Volt going in, going to try and do a lot of damage to Ubi as well as uh, Penny Smeb going in, but. Nightbolt is going to back out with Smep not really being able to do too much. We're going to throw that hammer into nothing, miss the droids. Good job, Ubi. Proud of you. And we've got Slemons and Smep just hanging out on this bottom lane. Blue team all <laughs> rotating to the bottom lane and now to the top. They're just jumping around looking for an initiation, trying to catch someone out of place, which they might just catch Nightbolt if he decides to actually get the pull. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen just yet. Dave W going to take a lot of damage, got a slow on him as well with Smeb. Gonna take the pull actually, gonna take 170 damage times two, and Ninevolt going with the Danger Prince could do about 250 damage to Nikki there, but Nikki got that in Viz. Gonna get the pull, and there's the dive coming in. Ninevolt very hurt, but he's gonna be able to get out, and now Nikki got that fourth lightning. He's gonna take a ton of damage from Scree's auto attack, and Scree actually accidentally picks up the Invis, it seems, right as the Invis is spawning. Gonna grab that, and now he's uh, gonna be a sneaky little shaman looking for the kill. Maybe going to try and throw out a saw blade on someone who's hurt, but uh, Ubi knows he's there now. He's going to throw it on the totem, but in kind of a bad spot. Nikki's going to be able to jump right through the trap he was trying to set up. But not Dave W. He's going to be stuck there for a minute there. And yeah, he got Lux trying Spike is a fat a fish. Trap. Spike had a hard time getting through that totem trap. But, uh, you know, Leon, he's a thin little lizard. He's able to get through there, no problem. Um, really, as it stands right now, the game hasn't progressed very much in the past three minutes. You get the feeling like both teams have kind of bounced off each other and... Now we see where Nikki's uh, left click plan has gone. He has decided to go for Chainsaw add-on for as much damage as possible, uh, which seems to be doing a lot of good work onto the Jimmy. Despite the fact that he's got nanobots, uh, is actually unable to out like out heal or uh, you know out survivability effectively the Leon's left clicks alone. The trick right now though is, do they have the burst to take out this red team? And it's Absolutely. actually very difficult to land. They do have it, I agree with you there, but it seems like it's it's very difficult to land. Well, we're seeing, like, Nick, they've been playing a little smarter now, but it doesn't oh, matter because they're going to land it right there. Nikki getting the body block and is going to get the silence pull, and that is it for Slevins. He's done, like, dinner. But Dave W. and Hoobie are just going to be clearing this bottom lane here, and... Nikki actually picking up the chainsaw add-on instead of attack speed. I'm a little surprised by that, but he just wants as much damage per swing as possible. Nightbolt gonna barely get out of alive oh, no. though. And we got Smeb gonna take a lot of damage, get the pull happen, get the dive happen, get anything happen. He's gonna rotate around. He's like not hitting the jump pad. He's missing the jump pad on bottom lane, gonna go for the teleport. Everybody is still chased up, gonna take these creeps though. Only one charge to his name, but he, that means he has pulse, or excuse me, counts. Well, both really. And he's gonna get taken out by Dave W's auto attack anyways, but now oh, Slevin's wow. in a terrible spot again. The hammer's not gonna connect, but Nightbolt's gonna pick up the kill on Nikki. Finally, the god has bled and he is dead. And now Nightbolt's going to just well. He's rotating around, he's a little bit hurt, and there's a creep up there. Dave W's gonna get that 700 damage dash. He's gonna but Nightbolt is just gonna charge out, waiting for that cooldown, just doing the footsie knots in the enemy area. And he's gonna be able to get out just fine. But 
Slevin's, you know, almost diving again, but he manages to get saved by Nine Volt. Nikki finally going down. He's getting pills now. He's learned from his mistakes, and he's also going to get damage on Tung. And we've also got slow on Sawblade from Scree, so we finally got that slow saw Sawblade on Scree as well as all that damage plus Star Storm one stage of it. So Scree's Sawblade is officially at terrifying levels, especially with that slow. And we've got Nikki just doing so much damage with Auto Attack that both teams really have an like insane damage dealer right now, along mm -hmm. with Gunpenny, of course. With that said, though, Nikki is not yet done getting damage, whereas it really feels like Scree has picked up all the damage he could possibly get now at this point. Uh, Nivel just barely gonna get out of there. Oh, that pull was really good. He does get off the target. Slevin's very low. Out comes a dash. It'll be enough to pick up the last hit there. Dave W picking up the kill. Bringing the score 11 to 3 at the 17 minute, 35 second mark. Um, blue team has a two level lead and looks like oh it might not end God. there as the damage oh comes out. Dave W picking up another kill with the bubble gun thanks to a lot of help from his friends. And it's just Smeb now defending. And honestly, without combo points, Penny can't really do much. And Nikki's got a lot of turret push thanks to that Clover of Honor. Uh, that does deal damage, extra damage to all things. Turrets, droids. It's 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 a scary time. Right now, it is definitely within the uh, Doo Doo Demon's hands whether or not they win or they lose at this point. I, I, this is their game to lose. And what's uber funny here is that despite having the most kills, Nikki is the only one to have actually died as well. Did you just say uber funny here? Yes, I did. Oh my god. Slow Wolf, why? But Nightbolt's gonna take a lot of damage. Oh, I could have said ubi funny. Smab is oh. taking a ton of damage over here. He's barely gonna be able to survive. Um, with ubi, hilariously, not being able to do enough uber damage to get a kill there. I, I've had it up to here with you. You can't see it, but duh. I'm, you're, you're imagining it. This is good. This enough. is what I live for. <laughs> just to, yeah, just to make me mad. He lives. To make me mad. <laughs> Same with pillow. But now this bottom, this bottom tower having one bar now. Nikki's just trying to look at uh, the damage. Maybe get the back door in and take that, that tower out. Gonna get a pull onto nine. We'll not really do anything with that though. And Ubi gonna get charged, but not really take any damage. And the dive is gonna come out nine. Well, he's gonna take a hilarious amount of damage there and stay alive though because he is Lux and he is beefy, beefy baby. But. There's the pull. There's a lot of damage oh, to dive in. That no. is done. Annihilated. And now that's a base exposure as well, with Nikki just doing whatever and trying to look for that pull on Slevin. So, nine volt up there are going to be uh, just trying to clear this top lane and also try to get the charge, maybe. But you'd see if he's going to try to work some magic. There's Nikki there just sitting there, but he's going to get some auto attack swings on nine volt. Too much damage, rivaling nine volt's auto attack, but he also has the burst and the invis. And nine volt going to have to go back and get some health. But now Penny is back. With a little bit of poke onto that red team from space, but Nikki is going to look for the oh, initiation. Jimmy's trying to do something on top, it. but he's just taking a lot of damage instead. He's just barely going to be able to survive here. Smab now in a weird situation, trying to find a kill onto Nikki, but is now being split up from the team. Penny will have to back off. Nikki going right back in, uh, putting out some left click damage, and he's now prepared. Oh, to apparently barely survive a pulse that came out of nowhere. Ubi now trying to put in some bindings damage, but as we all know, bindings damage is oh. more like hee hee tickles. Dash damage on the other hand, not so much as uh, Dave W picks up the last hit there onto Nine Volt and. 20 minutes in, it looks like this game is just about over and wrapping up. We got a three level advantage right now for the Doo Doo Demons as they put their d -d deliberate d -d -d damage into this core. Um, yeah, it looks like that's going to be your game one right now. And in a very is, interesting uh, fashion, yes. that will be, uh, be your game. Honestly, a very commanding kind of game. A score of 14 to 4 is not, is usually indicative of we had this game from the start. Well, it was still a 20-minute match, and the red team put in a good effort in the beginning there, but the blue team had that slight little bit of steamroll, and when they actually got that coordination with Nikki landing all of those fantastic pulls with Tung, and then, you know, the dive from Vinny and Spike from uh, Dave W, just doing so much damage, almost 800 damage. You just, you just need, like, you need three upgrades to do that much damage, and he didn't even have max damage. He went for silence dive instead, too, instead of uh, double seahorse head, or dead seahorse head. And, I mean, there's not much you could do against that. It's just like you got two ways to initiate, and then you got such reliable, easy to hit, medium, like low, low cooldown. It's only seven second cooldown for 700 damage with a silence on it. It's insane. It is very good, and if you used properly, almost risk free. And with the team that he had going on for him, it was like gank dot deck. It was one of the easiest things to do if you just coordinated tongue into hammer into bindings into dash. It was simple. It was effective, and I was able to kind of pick apart. A team that drastically relied on its ability to keep its distance until the right time. Specifically, Scree is very vulnerable to that kind of thing. Um, and I think that this kind of shows that Scree, although he does a godlike amount of damage, is 
by no means unkillable. Like we mentioned earlier, uh, Nikki does bleed, so does Scree in this particular case. Um, where do you think the red team needs to be careful in terms of uh, gameplay or draft or whatever in the next round? Do not underestimate the scoop pick because the scoop is just a great body to have on your team when you already have so much damage like Leon and Vinny. And maybe just try not to let people get Vinny anyways because Vinny is very strong. There are a few characters that are just really, really good. Like, they're not like there's characters that are really good. Like, you know, they'll usually make it through the draft because you only have four bands to work with and they are very solid picks on almost every map. And there's a few characters like that. Penny is really, really good a lot of the time. Vinny is like really, really good. Yeah, now I'm getting to that. And Lux is a really solid pick a lot of the time as well, especially on Agalon. And you know, if you're playing on Ribbit, Purple and Ted could be quite effective as well. But you know, the really, really good characters that you kind of have to ban, at like at least like you know more than 50% of the time, Genji and Vinny, def I'd say would fall into that category. They are just very, very strong. It depends for Genji, but Vinny does so much damage, it can be really hard to win against a Vinny when you've already got another. Mm -hmm. Like, if your damage just cannot compare, or you don't have the tankiness. So, Scoop plus two DPS is a viable team comp, it seems. It's two out of two times it's managed to work, but uh, we'll see what happens in the next game. So, as we set that up, and we get everything uh, ready to go, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more doo-doo demons. Yes. <laughs> Versus Samsung Galaxy. Uh, stay tuned.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Awesome Nuts Rumble May Gathers, our, our uh, monthly tournament. And we are back after that short break, and we have got another match in this wonderful set between Samsung Galaxy and Doodoo Demons after Doodoo Demons has taken the first match. And it was a pretty good match on Aegon getting uh, plenty of kills. Nikki doing some work with Leon, and we are ready to get into the second match. But first, I am Uberenzi, as you may already know, and someone else you may already know is Slow Wolf, and he's going to be casting with me. Uh, Slow Wolf, you there? Oh, hi. Yep, no, I'm good to go. <laughs> um, honestly, it was. A pretty crazy game last game. Uh, Doodoo Demons made a fantastic, um, you know, go at having a, like a, a win, honestly, and they were pretty commanding throughout the entire thing, ending up fourteen to four in terms of kills, and it was brutal. But at the same time, it wasn't one-sided brutal. It was very much it kind of both camps capable, you know, like it was. It could have been either way throughout a good chunk of it. So as a result. I'm, I'm willing to bet that this game could go the other way, that this series could be tied up, but there is the possibility that it ends up getting clinched out 2-0 uh, right here, right now, honestly. And that kind of depends a lot on the draft. As we've seen before, drafts have had a pretty significant impact. So, with that said, Uber, are you ready to get started? Absolutely. All right. So, we are on Ribbit Ribbit. Ribbit 4. Oh, home boy. Rugged you. Get her. Yeah, and we for Team 1, we've got Samsung Galaxy. Team 2 is going to be Doodoo Demons, because that affects the draft of who gets first ban, first pick, etc. But for the bans for Team 1, Team Samsung Galaxy, we've got the bans being Deadlift and Vinny, having learned their lesson, it seems, from the last match. And for the picks, they're going to have Ted, Swiggins, and Durple. And since this is Ribbit, that could be quite a bit of damage and quite an effective team. But Team 2, Doodoo Demons, has got the ban knots of... Genji and Froggy G. So Froggy is not going to get to go to his hometown. Alas, it will not be. Or it's more like his home planet. Eh. But for the pick knots, they're going to have Ix, Penny, and Raylan once again is going to be seen in this uh, tournament. So lots of Raylan, surprisingly. And not just on AI Station, too. Because Raylan can be, can be pretty effective on Ribbit, but... Yeah, but right now, I feel like maybe it's just because I like Ted a lot, but Samsung Galaxy's team looks pretty good right now. That seems like a really solid team comp. They've got a lot of mid-control, they've got a lot of damage. Swiggins can go with the initiation with Ted in order to pick off Stragglers, so that Durple can just lock down that mid, get the drop nukes down that chimney, and also assist with, you know, like, if they manage to catch someone with the Swiggins anchor, you can just kind of drop on top of them in Siege Mode and right-click, and then they're going to get evaporated. So... Uh, Durple, very strong pick. Surprised that he made it all the way to the third pick without being picked. That seems almost, like, uh, that just seems strange, because normally he's at least banned on Ribbit, because he is a very, very good pick on Ribbit. But, for Team Doodoo Demons, you've got Ix and Penny, which is going to be, Ix is going to be able to displace people and get some nice initiations, being able to place himself right into the enemy team in order to distract him and place an enemy right in front of his teammates to get them killed. And, Raylan gonna have that time rift gonna be quite effective with Ix's swap as well. And yeah, Raylan is a great pick against Durple as well. Something I forgot to mention is gonna be fantastic. And Petty doing a lot of damage, gun penny for push, all sorts of good stuff. So uh what do you think about either team? You got any striking thoughts? Uh nothing you haven't already mentioned. Uh, like you, I'm a little bit surprised that Durple and Ted went to the same team, but if anybody's a counter to both of those knots. Raylan, with the capability of swapping or pouncing them into Time Rifts, is a good way to do it. Swiggin's also particularly prone to being uh, Time Rifted. So a lot of this rests on the Raylan play, I think. But, uh, you know, Raylan also pretty susceptible to stun. And they've got at least two characters that can stun from a decent distance away on the red team. Mm -hmm. We'll see how this turns out. But to see how this turns out, we need to be in-game. So uh, when you are ready, Uber, we can get started. Absolutely. Oh. Let me just get into to this here. I'm now, while we're in there, keep in mind that these uh, these finals here are about as live as you can possibly make them. They're still playing this, but um, as far as these teams go, I mean, who? How would you bet if you had to pick a team? I feel like well, the Ted and uh, Durple are going to be the very like strong picks for this map. They always kind of are because they, they they're just too good on this map. Durple could just lock down that chimney, and you've got Ted that can well airstrike the chimney, I guess. And with the, uh, the, but the Raylan is like a counter to both, and you've got the ability to pounce and swap, like you already said. But the, th the thing with that, 
thing with that is that you've got all you've got one counter riding against two, so they kind of have to rely on Raylan not screwing up. And if they if Raylan chokes at all, then there could be some serious issues for them. But I have now got the replay uh, fixed and ready to roll. I'm at 21 seconds in the replay. Are you ready to roll, uh, Slow Wolf? I'm gonna say roll as many I times am. as I can. Roll. Yeah, well, I'm ready to roll with you. If you're ready to roll with me, let's roll out. I'm ready to roll out. Let's go. Starting at 21 seconds, starting from three, going at go. Three, two, one, go. And rid of four. The very first map, the original, the classic. On the red team, you got Slevins playing your Swiggins, you got uh, Simip, Smeb, sorry, playing your Ted, and you've got Nine Volts playing your Dirtful. On the blue team, you got Nikki playing the Raylan. Dave W playing the X, scary, scary, scary. And Ubi, again, very scary, playing the Penny. So some people on their mains for sure right now. Uh, Red team needs to be a little bit careful here, but they can still take this thanks to drafts alone. Nine volts putting down a very good pick down there. Nikki gonna end up getting cornered by the turret Durple and get killed. However, the Ooh, entire the Red team that. is low and will need to back off for now as Dave W and Ubi continue to. Uh, just farm away and get some stuff down in the middle. As you mentioned before, I think that Zirple's going to be a strong pick here, as well as Ted. I think and predict that the first two turrets to go down will be blue, but then after that, it's going to balance out and be somewhat more stally. I yeah, I could I could see that happening. We're actually seeing auto attack that only affects astronauts uh, going to Raylan here, the Lucky Cat air freshener. And we've also got the uh, deployment pads on Durple, which could be quite effective. They're very useful for if you get out of siege mode as you're oh, uh, in the no. bottom area of the chimney. Oh no! Good What a body block! Gonna get, but... gonna get sniped there as well. Oh, the jukes! Nikki gets away with no HP, or does he? Oh, he's oh. going in, tries to go hard on oh, Nine Volt, but Nine Volt's now all alone in a corner. Oh. Dave W gets off enough life flicks as well as Ubi's pounds to be able to pick up a kill. It's gonna be a team wipe here for the blue team. Managing to bring it up 3-2, to two, taking the lead, and taking the mid against a team that, by all rights, should have had it from the beginning and not let it go. Uh, AoE Grapple going to be a big pickup here, as well as the Silence Traps. Very, very strong against this X, uh, forcing him to like not be able to refract or to pick up Baby Curry Mammoth bright and early in this game. Absolutely, yeah, that, that, was, in, that was a pretty crazy first little... Uh wipe, I suppose, it's just really huge team fight. Dave W gonna eat that snare trap with a refract, oh, but man. Slevin's taking a lot of damage, got that amp damage on him, he's gonna have to be careful. Swiggins is not someone you want to be hurt if you want to fight, but Dave W gonna get caught in that snare trap, and he's gonna eat the aggro hook, but the drop is not gonna get the break damage, or even do much damage at all, because the refract is going to break that. Very annoying. Something we didn't think about, actually, or talk about, is that uh, Ix is quite good against Swiggins, being able to soak up that hook, and then just refract out of it. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's one of the bigger counters to Swiggins, I think, in the, in the game is the ability to swap your teammates out of it or just refract yourself out of it. It, it does not help against X. Neither does the ability to do both of those against the nuke or against an airstrike. Like, there's a lot going on here that X can do, and it's not just Raylan against the world right now, but uh, Raylan's pretty central. I think that X is the is a really good supporting act. Like, X is kind of the bassist in this particular rock group where Raylan's playing lead guitar. Penny's mm -hmm. making it sing, though. That silence pulse is going to be absolutely instrumental later game, I think, for sure. Well, I hope Penny is singing with her current voice and not her, like, beta voice, because, uh, oof. But, either way, we've got the mid control <laughs> going to the red team now, as it should, with the Durple getting those snare traps all over the mid area. It's going to catch Dave W, but he's mostly just doing that to burn them. Hasn't opted for anything like uh, duration oh, on bond, snare trap, but Slavin. Oh, Bond, damage on Slavin. He'll end up surviving for now. Out comes the snipe. It's going to hit 9 volt. 9 volts, like, you know, nuke. Not going to do much. Ubi jumps into a snare trap, though, and gets himself killed. Um... Tying up the score 3-3. Three to three. Experience still in favor of blue, but uh, not by too much. Turret damage also in favor of blue. The blue turrets have barely been touched. This is a very action-packed oh, game compared to the last bunch. Oh, Nikki taking a lot of damage. Out comes the nuke. It's going to be a kill. Dave W not trying to do as much as possible to get some kills as well, but will not find them despite the fact the entire red team is low. Eats a silence trap is potentially in grapple range. Will play it safe. Ubi in a situation where maybe a pounce into a pulse could get a kill, but... Uh, Oh, Slevins uses up the grapple, but Ubi decides against it. Probably a wise decision considering that 9-Volt was right there, ready to support. Uh, and they'll instead 
just solidify the fact that they've got the middle again against a team that should, by all rights, like we've mentioned before, have it. Uh, currently, it's about five minutes in. Even more action. Snipe comes out. It's going to be a last hit here for Nikki, and the action is non-stop this game. Snipe being attacked. Wow, will end up getting killed here. Nikki picking crap. up a double kill. Now it's just nine volts against the world. Um, and out comes the Snipe. It's going to end up hitting. Darple's quite low. Will not have access to the mid. Dave W has enough regen to be able to keep things going for sure right now. And... Now it's going to be top turret down in favor of the blue team. Nikki's now going to get very cheeky here and take out this solar boss on the red team side of the map. That's nasty this early on. It's not even six minutes in and they've managed to pick up the solar boss on the other side of the map. Uh, yeah, Raylan's really good at killing that solar boss too. Ubi going to eat a nuke and almost the airstrike, but the anchor drop is going to hit both members. Or no, is only going to hit the member that's not too injured as both other members of the blue team here. Uh, Doo -doo Demons are quite injured. They're going to have to play it safe and fall back, but it looks like Ubi's going to grab some health and try to kill this solo boss. Hopefully he doesn't die to it. I don't think he's going to, though. He's smarter than that. And we got Smeb. Well, the entirety of the red team just going to glamour it in that bush up top there. So it's going to take a lot of damage. going to have to play it safe. Swiggins really can't go in unless he's got... Like, if he's got low health, unless he's, like, very, very careful. It's really hard for Swingens to initiate for his team when he's low health because he's, like, oh, you know, he's not the Oh, Durple's in a bad spot. He eats a pulse. Very spot. low. It gets picked off by Ubi. Ubi's going to be able to pick up that kill. No problem. Six minutes in. It's now six to four. There's ten kills in six minutes. It's more kills than the past, like, couple of games have had, it feels like, already. Um, and I predict that will continue to happen. But I'm also going to go ahead and admit a mistake. The first turret going down is Reds. I was not expecting that at all. I thought that Red Team was firmly going to take the first two turrets of this, but no dice. How do you think Blue Team's managed to pull this one off so Blue Team has been playing phenomenally. Like, they have been playing so well considering the team comps like I it, like now you know like when, whatever I say about team comps is gonna be wrong most of the time it's like now you know it's just like oh well I really like the Drupal of Dead just kidding blue team takes the first turret and the second one just shortly after but Slevin's about to go down and nine volt and whoo, that that's snipe and that's, that's a team that's a wipe that's it seven I don't even minutes know. in and that's a wipe commentate like they're all dead everybody's dead turret's gonna go down 10 seconds before anyone on the red team is gonna be back this turret's getting melted. It's gonna be gone in like three seconds. There it goes. Three, two, one, done. And now like they, they they won't have time to attack the base, but three turrets to none. And just a huge advantage for the blue team. The red team has an amazing comp for this map, but the blue team is playing so well. Nikki doing really good work with those airstrikes. Ubi going in and getting the kills. Great snipes from Nikki as well. And they got a super droid on this bottom turret, but not for long as it seems to be shooting backwards. It looks a little weird, a little funky, but whatever, we'll roll with it. And, well, Dave W stealing the creeps, and now the red team is just, they're on their toes now. Like, if they lose, then goodbye, uh, Samsung Galaxy. They're going to be in a rough spot. Well, Samsung Galaxy's known for exploding, so. Uh, with that said, though, maybe they'll blow up the other way. It's, it's not super likely as they're three levels behind, pretty much. Um... And the blue team has got some scary pickups already in this game. Eight minutes in, we've got a maxed out time rift with a decent amount of damage against Nuts. Uh, we've got the entirety of Refract's core upgrades being picked up, and the action doesn't stop. Dave W goes down, oh. but not before we get a kill on Spev. Now Nivo gets caught in the time rift to end all oh, time rift. So much us. damage. Nikki is no, looking for an attempt on a kill, but the <laughs> lack of it. Like, oh my god, the Soul Boss gets a kill. Sevens does something really dumb and gets himself almost picked off. He's, he's just he's standing just... still. Oh what no. Oh no. What is, he what doing? is going on? What? I don't know. I don't know. But then he goes as well. And that's going to be another kill there for what a crazy crazy confident game right now nikki almost gets killed but will survive the airstrike gets pounced into a time rift the pulse misses though and smeb will live another day but uh ubi will just teleport on out almost is going a little bit aggro gonna try to see if they can't uh, take out nine volts or harass poke nine volts at least and that seems oh to be the God. case it's gonna be an easy kill there for ubi as he 1v1s the uh, Durple, no problem. However, at what cost? Ubi versus no the cost! Dave no W gets a nice, <laughs> gets a nice bond to keep him alive for a little while, but no kill either um, for Ubi. Instead, Ubi does end up going down eventually uh, as she goes back in. But oh, um, what, I, like, what is that going to accomplish? It is a two-level difference. The core is already taking a third of its HP. Every single red turret's already completely dead, and it's all nine and a half minutes in. Um, out comes the bond, the swap comes out, and maybe an inopportune time to be honest with you. Dave W is looking really strong. Nikki gets oh, not the nuked. The time rift is too much! 
The tyrant is too much! Nikki picks up another kill! Tyrant's <laughs> another one! Down he goes! DW picking up two last hits, a double kill, and an easy game here! For the Doo Doo Demons, happening? completely crapping on the red team here, living up to their name. What a shitty game for Red. Pardon my English. That has got to be said. Pre 10 minutes in a competitive match is an unfortunate state of affairs. That was brutal. Raylan did so much. What? Nikki, okay, so Nikki, that time rift, that singular time rift at the end of the game, did so much. Not only did it save Nikki from getting nuke because it delayed the nuke, uh, the actual nuke from firing, so he fired it into the ground, it got triple killed. It also trapped Ted because he used Stimpak while in the time rift, so he's locked in that animation for like a whole second or two. So there's nothing he can do and he just dies. What the actual hell just happened? I want to swear, but I can't. I got well, like, friend. honestly, it's just ah! it was really good play out of the blue team. Lots of key body block moments early on started off a snowball that just did not stop if Durple and Ted did not take the middle and keep it early there was no way for them to actually win the game and well I mean look at what happened they weren't able to take the mid and it's gone <laughs> like the game is gone you say you, you enter the game and it's it's gone like the entire thing went to heck in a handbasket faster you could say what the heck happened because of really well placed time rifts, good body blocks, and then just they were able to take it by storm. It was incredible. Uh, very well played, honestly. And as much as I like was looking forward to another game with a lot of I don't know zoning out of the red team, it just didn't happen. The blue team gave absolutely no care as to whether or not they were close to the Durple and the Ted, they just went in anyway. I mean, you saw by the end of it that Penny Fox was able to solo a Durple while Durple was in turret mode. That was... That was bananas. But, um, honestly, there's not much else to say there. It was just a very commanding victory that might have been lost to the draft screen just because, you know, Raylan and X exist um, against, uh, against Durple. Like, that was just a very good draft and followed by very good gameplay. I'm, I'm watching the kill cam reel on the stream right now, and some of the time rift and pounce combos that Nikki and Ubi did as well, and Ubi almost got away from the base, like, but Dave W swapped him into death, which is I think find kind of hilarious. But yeah, there's that, am and then the amazing time rift from from Nikki that got pretty much everybody on the red team killed. That was phenomenal play by Nikki and like Ubi, just everybody on the blue team, just whoa. That was a really good match. Like, it yeah. was a short match, and it was stompy, but it was really well played by the blue team, by Doo Doo Demons here. That was insane. Yeah, that, I mean, that was just... That was unfortunately a really crappy situation for Red to be in, but that's the end of it, honestly. Doo Doo Demons going to go ahead and take it, and they're going to move onwards to the next couple of games, where it's going to be, you know, like, terribly named team versus Doo Doo Demons. So, I mean, we might as well move on to that one. While we get that one set up, Guys, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back uh, with some more awesome nuts.